This is an exam walk through the grade 12 RT prac exam from November 2019. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the start of question three. Now, question three is normally the object oriented qu programming question, or the OOP question. And it's normally got two parts to it. The first part being you creating methods or manipulating methods for the actual object. So working in the object. And then the second part of the question is you using the object that was manipulated or created in the first part of the question. So we're going to look at the first part particularly. So here we have an object. The school is creating software for rugby players. And this is the program, which we probably won't even get to, um, but it's good to have a look at what it looks like, just in case it gives us some clues of how things must be displayed, in case we need to use it as, a, as an advice. And let's get to the first part. Yeah, they tell us that there's an incomplete object called T player, and it contains the declarations of three attributes, the player's name, the weight, and the score. So this has been done for us. Um, we need to start writing from here. So we're going to write the code for the constructor method that will receive the player's name and weight as parameters. And we're going to put that into the relevant attribute uh, fields. And these must be assigned. And But the score we do not get as a parameter, but we're going to just set that to zero. Okay, so that's our first program, first part of the program. So here is question three. Um, we're going to go here on the side you see there's the player object um, or the class. So we're going to double click on that so we can open that. And here it is. There you can see the three attributes that have been created for us. And they're all done privately. We're going to now create our methods um, publicly. So the first one, as you said, was a constructor. So we can say constructor. Oh, this has popped up. Nope. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Con constructor and constructors are normally called create and in this case we want to have a constructor that takes in two parameters one for the player's name and one for the weight so that's the only so we need a string parameter so i'm gonna call this s name of type string and then a semicolon because that's a new type of parameter being declared or a new type of parameter being yeah, specified here and the weight so i'm gonna call that's a real value so r weight of type real and that is my constructor well that's the declaration part now we're going to just press Control shift c so that we can write the code for it and the key thing remember we take in the values from the parameters and we put in them into the field so we change in the fields not the parameters these are like if you think of inputs they basically input into this constructor so if player no, player name the field is going to be assigned whatever value we were given here as a parameter s name and then the other parameter is the weight of the player and that's going to be assigned whatever value is given as a parameter here so the weight and then the last field was the score and they said we must just default that to a zero okay so that's four marks boom now i must write the code for an accessor method Method is going to access get score. That's for the score attribute. We want to be able to. So if we were in another program, we would want to access the score. In other words, we need to get that score returned to us. So that accessor methods are normally functions. So let's go over here to the top. We're going to create a function. Function get score. And there's no parameters that it needs. It's just going to return the score. And so it's going to return a integer value because that's what the score is. I'm going to control shift C and it's simply result equals whatever the F score field is. So we send in back the, the score field. So that is the parameter for that. So that's the accessor method. Sorry. Next, write the code for a method called update score that receives an integer value as a parameter and add the received value to the score. Do you notice there's nothing about returning? So that's obviously going to be a procedure. So we're going to create a procedure over here. And we're going to call it update score. And it takes in a integer value that's the it's a value of a particular score. I'm going to add it onto our current score field. So 
I'm going to just call it a score of type integer. And it doesn't return anything because it's a procedure. Control Shift C. And so what we are doing is we are updating the, the field score with this. We're not changing it to whatever the score is. We're just taking that and adding it on. If you read it carefully, it says we'll receive the integer and adds the receive value to the score. So whatever is currently stored in the score we want to keep there, we're just going to add this as a new score. So we're going to add this R score to it. Okay, so basically take whatever's in the score and add a new score to it. Okay, here we go. Next, write a method called calculate BMR. It receives the height of the player as a parameter. So it's going to get the height and calculate and return. So it's a function, the player's BMR based on this formula. So the BMR is the weight of the player, which we have. And then whatever this parameter for the height is, we'll square it and divide it by that. So because we're dividing, we pro and because we're using the weight, the weights are real, and we're dividing, that's also a good indication that this would be a real function. So calculate BMR. So we're going to create at the top here boom, boom, a function called calculate BMR, which takes in, if you remember, calculate. I didn't spell that right. Calculate BMR. That must receive the height of the player. It's, I don't know if it must be an integer or real. Let's make it a real because height could be in decimal values. And it's going to return a real. So take the height, return it. There we go. And we're going to return the BMR, which is also going to be a real. Control Shift C. So let's do this calculation. Result, we can just do the calculation straight away, is equal to the height. No, the weight, sorry, the weight. So the field for the weight of the player divided by this height parameter, but we must square this height parameter. So I'm going to square it, square the height parameter. Square the height parameter, then we take the weight divided by that answer, and that should be the BMR that's being sent back. Yo, it's going quickly. Now the next one. Or write a code for a method called eligible for selection that can be used to determine the possibility of the selection to play in the provincial trials. And this is based on their score attribute. Depending on how many points they score, depends on what's their uh, eligibility, I would say. The method must return the message. So it's returning one of these options. So it's returning a string. It doesn't take any parameters in. So that's fine. So we're going to come to the top again and we're going to go, okay, let's make a function called we said eligible for selection eligible i forgot not to spell eligible does it right no there's not a there eligible for selection and that doesn't take any parameters but it does return a string control shift c so we're going to we're going to depending on what we want to send back it depends on the score field so if the f score field is between naught and seven. So if it's less than eight, less than eight, then we can say result equals low possibility. So that's that option. Else, if the score is 14 or less, if the score is less than or equal to 14, and we'll only get here if the score is definitely above 8. So we don't have to check if it's between 8 and 14 because it won't get past the else. The else makes it, that when it gets to this point, we know for a fact that it's definitely above 8 because if it was below 8, it would have stopped there. Then our result equals, is it medium? Medium possibility. Medium possibility. And if it's not less than 8, it's not less than 14. I've got my if here. Else if the score with that. Then it must be greater than 14. So then else the only other, you don't even need to check if it's that. If it's not less than 8, it's not less than 14. It must be above 14. So the else result equals ha ah, possibility. 
What about spell possibility, right? There's a possibility that I didn't. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so that's, I think, the function. Fantastic. Next one. I think this is the last one. Yep, last one. Write the code for the two string. There's always a two string function that will be used to display your object and the details of your object. Uh, that displays the attributes of the name, the weight, and their score looking like that. So each on a new line. So that's a string that we're going to return. Okay, so they always ask a two string function. So let's make a function called to string which returns a string that doesn't take any information go control shift c and we are going to say result is equal to the word name followed by a colon and a space and then now we're going to add the players field that's got their name now I want to go to a new line, so now I'm going to put hash 13, because hash 13 is a new line. Now after the new line, we're going to say the word wait, with a colon space. And we're going to put the actual weight of the player. If weight, is it weight of player? Weight of player. Weight of player, but remember this is a... Uh, string it's a real and this is returning a string so when it's converted from a float to a string and I select it all and there we go it seems to accept it if by some chance this float to string gives you an error you can just go up to the top here and just check that sysutils has been added because sysutils has that the details of how the float to string works so we add the weight, and then I'm going to have a brand new line, so another hash 13. And next on the new line, I'm going to say the word current score. Colon space, and then we're going to put the actual score that they've got, the score field. But that is an integer, so we convert it from an int to a string. So that we can display it. Boom. Let me just double check here. I want to see how many decimal places they display to one decimal place. Maybe we must display to one decimal place. Just to be sure, let's use float to string f over here. Because <laughs> they wanted me to display. It looks like it's one decimal place. Float to string f. And then we're gonna make this f fixed, comma, eight, comma, one. Make sure that we've got a one at the end there. I don't know if they mention anything about one decimal place. No, but just to be sure, let's do that. Okay, so there we go. That's all of it for our object. Now we can't test it. We can test if it runs with syntax that there's no errors. And there's no errors there. That's great. But um, we'll only get to actually test to see if those methods work when we actually use them in the next question. And then we might come back here and change one or two things if there are little mistakes here in our logic. But that'll be in the next video. For more videos from this exam walkthrough, go to our YouTube channel. Please click on the subscribe button, like our videos. Uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook and remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.